We spoke to nearly 50 uh, international students and academics, and this is certainly the most in-depth research anyone has done, speaking to um, people working in universities and international students about these issues. So it was really quite shocking to see how pervasive and common, um, not only harassment and intimidation, but it's the self-censorship, I think, that is really quite shocking. So we verified three cases of students who'd had their parents back home in the mainland visited by police or questioned because of activities that they had engaged in in Australia. So this was, you know, opening a Twitter account in Australia, a young student who came here and, and thought that he would you know, finally be able to express his opinions freely because he was studying in Australia, but quickly found that he was still um, under surveillance and, and tracked down and his parents back home were threatened um, uh, that, that he would be arrested if he returned to China because of this criticism of the CCP that he had made on Twitter. I think the university sector has been in a really difficult position. I mean, I think a lot of these issues they haven't wanted to know about, they haven't talked about and they have actively avoided discussing them with their staff and also with their students. And, you know, it's really disappointing wanting to learn that more than half of the students we interviewed who experienced harassment didn't tell their university. And the reason for that, they said, was because they thought that their university didn't care about students like them. So then we really hope that this report will be a big wake-up call for them to change their policies on many of these issues.